In this lecture, we are going to learn about static methods and properties of a class. Now, what is a static method and what is a static property? Let's first try to understand it diagrammatically. So, when we create instances of a class, whatever properties we define in that class and whatever methods we define in that class, the instance will also have that property and method. So, for example, here we are creating a class called product. There we have three properties, name, price and color. And we have two methods, calc discount and availability. So, when we are creating an instance of this product class, that instance will also have a name, a price and a color property and it will also have calc discount and availability method. When we create another instance, that instance will also have the name, price and color property and calc discount and availability method. So, every time we will create an instance of a class, that instance will have all the properties from that class and all the methods from that class. Now, here what is happening is, for each instance, we will have a copy of that property and a method. So, for example, each of these instance have a copy of calc discount method and availability method. So, each instance has a copy of that and it also has a copy of name, price and color property. Now, whenever we make a property or a method static, in that case, we will have only a single copy of that method or that property. So, for example, let's say we have made this calc discount method a static method. So, now what will happen is whenever we will create an instance of this product class, in that instance, we will not have a copy of this calc discount property, as you can see here. Instead, we will have a single copy of this calc discount property for that class. In the same way, if we create this color property a static property, then the instance which we will create for this product class, that instance will not have this color property. So now we don't have multiple copies of this color property and we also don't have multiple copies of this calc discount property. Instead, we have only one copy of this color property and we have only one copy of calc discount property. Now you might ask, if we don't have this calc discount method and this color property on these instances, then how can we access the color property and the calc discount method? Well, we don't have to access the static properties or methods on an instance. We can access it using the class itself and we will see that practically. So keep in mind that these properties, this name and price property in this product class, it is an instance property because we can access it on the instance of this product class. But this color property, it is not an instance property because we cannot access it on the instance of this product class because that instance does not have this property itself. So we cannot access it on instance. Instead, we can directly access it on the class name. So name and price here are instance properties and this color is a static property. Instance properties are those properties which can be accessed on an instance of a class. But static properties are those properties which we can access on the class itself. Same is true for methods also. So this availability method here, it is an instance method because we can access this availability method on the instance of the class. But this calc discount method, we cannot access it on the instance of the class. In this example, on the instance of this product class, because the instance does not contain a definition for this calc discount method. Instead, if we have to access this calc discount method, we will have to access it on the class itself. So this calc discount here is a static method and this availability here, it is an instance method. So enough theory. Let's understand static methods and properties practically. To understand static methods and properties, here I have created a simple employee class. In this class, we have this first name property and this last name property, and we also have this count property. And what we are doing is, in the constructor of this employee class, we are assigning this first name and last name with some value which we are going to receive when we are going to instantiate this employee class and inside this let's also do one thing let's increment the value of count so here let's say this dot count plus plus okay now 
let me go ahead and let me instantiate this employee class for that let's create a variable let's call it emp1 and to create an instance of the employee class we will use new keyword followed by the name of the class which is employee and now when we are calling this employee like this it is going to call the constructor of this employee class and for the constructor we need to pass the value of first name let's pass john and let's also pass the value for last name let's say last name is smith okay now let's write this console.log statement and here let's try to log the value of count so here let's say emp1 dot count let's save the changes let's refresh the page here and you will see one has been logged here because when we call the constructor when we are creating the instance of this employee class we are calling its constructor so when the constructor will be called inside that constructor we are incrementing the value of count variable the count property so when we are logging emp1 dot count its value is incremented to one now let's create one more instance so let me copy this code and let me paste it here and here let's call it emp2 this object and here we want to log the value of emp2 dot count okay so we want to log the value of count property for employee 2 object let's save the changes and you will see in both the cases one and one has been logged why because when we are creating a new instance of this employee class that new instance will have this count property whose initial value is zero and when its constructor is called its value will be incremented to one so that's why we are seeing one one in both the cases now what we will do is we will make this count property static property for that we can use the static keyword in front of that property and actually the static keyword should come after the access modifier okay so now this count it is a static property and when we have a static property and we want to use it inside the same class where we have defined it we cannot use it we cannot access it using this keyword why because this points to the instance of that class so when we are creating a, this emp1 instance at that time this this keyword will point to that emp1 object and when we are creating this emp2 instance at that time this keyword here will point to emp2 object and as we learned theoretically when we create a property a static property the static property are not available on the instance so this emp1 is the instance on that the count property will not be available because it is a static property in the same way on this emp2 also the count property will not be available because it is a static property so we cannot access it using this keyword then how can we access it as we learned we can access a static property or a method on the class itself so here we can simply say employee dot count here we are not accessing this property on the instance of this employee class instead we are directly accessing it on the class name itself so this is how we access a static property then when we are logging this count using the instance again this instance it is not going to have that static property so we as you can see this count here we have this error message count does not exist on type employee because this count property it is not an instance property it is a static property so it will not be available on the instance of the employee class now in order to access this count property we will have to use the class name so here we can say employee dot count same thing we can do here now if i save the changes you see when we are logging employee dot count at that time the value of count is one and when we are logging employee dot count here at that time the count is two and if i create a new instance like this and then if i try to log this employee count if i save the changes you will see that there the value is 3 because now since this count is not an instance property it is a static property every time we are going to create a new instance since we have only one copy of this count in the memory this count will be incremented using this constructor so initially the value of count is 0 when we created the first instance 
this constructor was called and its value was incremented to 1. When we created the second instance, again this constructor was called and the value of this count property got incremented from 1 to 2. When we created the third instance, again this constructor was called and the value of this count property incremented from 2 to 3. Since it is a static property, we will have only one copy of this property in the memory and all the instances will work with that same property. We are not going to have a separate copy of this count property for each instance. We will have a single copy and that single copy will be accessible to all the instances. Okay, I hope this point is clear. Alright, now let's also create a static method. So here we have this get full name method inside this employee class. So each instance will have a copy of this get full name method in it. But as soon as I change it to static, we will have a single copy of this get full name method. And that single copy can be accessed by all these instances using the class name okay and since this method is a static method inside this method we cannot use this keyword this is very important point to remember inside a static method you cannot use this keyword so what i will do is i will change this method name to maybe say hello and from here we will return a string message let's say hi there that's it. So now this say hello, it is a static method. That means only a single copy of this say hello method will be available, which can be accessed using the class name. So here, let me go ahead and let me call that. So here, let's say console.log. And here, we want to call this say hello method. For that, in order to call this say hello method, since it is a static method, it is not an instance method, we can call it on the class name itself so here we can say employee dot say hello and if i save the changes you will notice hi there logged in the console so keep in mind that when we create a static property or a static method there will be only a single copy of that static property or that static method and that single copy will be shared by all the instances of that class. In this example, the static property count and the static method say hello, it will be shared by all the instances of this employee class. And we create a static method or a static property using this static keyword. This is all from this lecture. If you have any questions, then feel free to ask it. Thank you for listening and have a great day.